Now, a really important feature in plant cells is something called the cell wall. And at the beginning of this lecture, we mentioned that animal cells typically be, typically tend to be more circular or kind of ovular in shape, whereas plant cells are typically more of a square or more of a rectangular shape. And that's because they have this thing called the cell wall. And animal cells don't have this, only plant cells do. But basically, it's an extracellular structure that distinguishes them from animal cells. And it's really important in that it helps to support a plant. So if you think about um, a skeleton, we have skeletons and that helps us to stay upright. But plants don't have that. They have to have some sort of alternate support and they get that from these cell walls. And it says plant cell walls are made of cellulose fibers which tend to be embedded in other polysaccharides and proteins. But they have multiple layers and what's cool about cell walls is they have these little channels that kind of travel between them, between adjacent cells. And they call these channels plasmodesmata. And they just connect um, one cell to the next and you know certain nutrients are able to pass through them or certain substances that one cell might need that another cell might have um, can, can travel through these different channels that they call plasmodesmata. And here's a picture of those different channels. So on the bottom you can see we have all these plant cells that are lined up next to each other but there are these tiny little they look like little channels, little tunnels if you will and those are those plasmodesmata that are going to allow substances to move between adjacent cells. Again this is just a real-time photograph of those plasmodesmata. Now, something that animal cells have that plant cells don't is this extracellular matrix that surrounds the cell. Well, animals lack cell walls, but they're covered by this abbreviated ECM, extracellular matrix. And basically, it's just a bunch of proteins and other types of macromolecules that kind of hug an animal cell or surround an animal cell. And different functions include support, allowing a cell to move, um, animal cells can kind of adhere themselves to something, it helps them to regulate different substances in and out of the cell, and we'll talk about that in, in greater detail later, but I really just want you to be familiar with the fact that there is this kind of substance of proteins and molecules that surround animal cells, and they call that the extracellular matrix. And here's a picture of it. So you can see this kind of gray and yellow band that's running through the picture that's illustrating the plasma membrane. And surrounding it is all this, it looks like a jungle or a playground or something like that, but all this stuff is just surrounding it. And all that stuff is proteins and molecules that they call the extracellular matrix. Now there are certain types of junctions that I'd like for you to know that occur in animal cells. And there's three main types of junctions that exist between adjacent cells. And we'll look at pictures in just a minute to help clarify, but they are tight junctions, desmosomes, and finally gap junctions. So let's look at all of these kind of individually and we can kind of see how they allow a cell to function. Well, in this picture on the top, we see kind of a netted purple appearance that's kind of running through a cell. And they're calling that the tight junction that can exist between cells. So basically, tight junctions allow neighboring cells to kind of sit on top of one another or kind of neighbor each other very, very closely. And it kind of creates a seal between all these adjacent cells that helps to prevent leakage of different types of fluids, and it just ensures that cells are able to stay connected to one another. So that's what they mean when they refer to a tight junction. Now desmosomes, if you look on the image, they're kind of, it's kind of the halfway down, kind of sideways anemone if, if you're trying to be creative. It's the only thing I can think of that it might look like, but desmosomes kind of exist like facets or rivets, if you will. They help to kind of anchor the cells together, okay, or they kind of kind of hook the cells together, if you will. 
And finally, we have these gap junctions. And the gap, junction, gap junctions are on the very bottom of this illustration, but you can see they look, they remind me of the plasmodesmata we saw in the, in the plant cells, but basically they're just kind of little channels that travel between the adjacent cells. And they allow for, again, substances to move between cells that might exist in close proximity. These illustrations are just here for your review.